So I'm a huge fan of what you might call fictional universes, and if you're watching this video, you probably are too. Which is why it kind of irritates me that people don't seem to be aware of the biggest, most genuinely gargantuan shared universe there is in all of media. And the thing is, even if you're not aware of this shared universe, you have 100% definitely consumed several pieces of media in it, at least. There's books, there's films, there's TV series, there's theatre plays, video games, just any kind of media that you can imagine, and it exists. Tens, if not hundreds of thousands, if not millions of creators have contributed to the shared universe. And of course, when you have a project that is that big, there will be some contradictions and different interpretations of things. It's certainly the most financially successful universe to ever exist. There's entire branches of academia dedicated solely to analyzing and uncovering its works and law. It is so massive that even a lot of other fictional universes reference it all the time. In fact, a lot of fictional universes are just alternate versions of this one. And despite the amount of published works in it, only a teeny tiny fraction of it has ever been explored. I'm of course talking about THE universe, the one that people like to call the real world. Mad Men, The Sopranos, The Old Man and the Sea, Pride and Prejudice, Casablanca, Schindler's List, all of these are set in a fictional version of Earth. So really, they have nothing to do with each other. They are created by entirely different people or groups of people. They don't reference each other. They just happen to be set in the same world. Sure, New York City, which features very prominently in Mad Men, also features in The Sopranos. And because they're like adjacent time periods, it is possible that whenever Tony goes to New York, he might run into a character from Mad Men, but he doesn't. But Pride and Prejudice is about some rich chick living in Britain in the 1800s. And then the old man and the sea, whole different continent, some Cuban fishermen in the 1950s who can't catch fish. They have absolutely nothing in common with each other, yet they are set in the same world. And I mean, why would they have anything to do with each other? It's different stories involving different people, set in different places at different time periods. Stories just kind of happen all of the time everywhere. I mean, sure, they have different focuses, different tones, different authors, different themes, different audiences. You know, because they're different stories. Yet no one bats an eye at the fact that all of these are set in the same reality. Because it's not relevant. Why would they? It never comes up. It's not a point that has any influence on the books at all. Now imagine some random fantasy author writes a novel about a prince who becomes the king and has to mourn the loss of his father while having to deal with all these new responsibilities being hoist upon him. At the same time, he secretly suffers from PTSD, and that contributes to the estrangement he is having from his wife, which is the princess that he saved from the tower that the dragon was guarding. And he initially married her out of politics, and on his side the feelings grew, but she didn't really, like, reciprocate. Now a completely different author writes a book about an alchemist who is marooned on a tropical island and she has to evade a toad demon that is fueled by her own feelings of guilt and regret that had come from the betrayal of her crew. And in addition to surviving, she has to find the ingredients for a potion that will turn her into a fish, but it's very dangerous because she has to use substitute ingredients. They don't reference each other at all. Maybe they call the world by the same name. Maybe, you know, they, they reference a, a country that is extremely prominent, but neither of them actually uh, shows to the reader because that's just a thing that exists in the world. But they are very much set in the same world. They're different stories, centuries apart, with different characters doing different things, talking about different themes, having different styles, different voices, but they are in the same secondary world. People would flip their shit. I'm sorry, but uh, if these stories have absolutely nothing to do with each other, uh, why are they set in the same universe? Uh, I'm not seeing the main storyline of this uh, world yet. I assume that there will be one. Uh, how, how will these two things tie into that? Are there any of the people that are mentioned here? Will they be main characters in the main storyline? Here's a question. 
What's the main storyline of Earth? Who are the main characters? Why are all these stories written by millions of authors set in the same universe? If you think about it, the real world just commits a whole slew of the world-building mistakes and, you know, cardinal sins that fantasy and science fiction editors and critics will put down people for. I mean, the Mediterranean is just conveniently formed just to have an empire emerge from it. And there's so many countries where the capital isn't even near the actual middle of the country where it would make sense. And there's really just a comical amount of fjords around Norway. Like, what the fuck were you trying to do where that's completely unrealistic? And rivers never split, ever. That doesn't happen. This world isn't built to suit the main storyline. The storyline bends to the will of the world. World. There's way too many characters doing way too many different things and then sometimes they just lead nowhere or you don't know who did what and there's always just a ton of unanswered questions. And even though we're told that these things are bad storytelling, like traditional fiction just gets away with them all of the time. They drown in accolades for them. Imagine if George R. R. Martin called me up on this here phone right now and said, hey, how about you write a story of a guy who lives in Dawn a century before Aegon Targaryen even knows about the, the fact that Westeros exists and he's just a cannibal who's attracted to horses. First thing that would happen is I would ask how George R. R. Martin got my phone number. I'm really very careful about giving that out. But also then I would 100% write that book. And it doesn't matter how good or bad it would be People would just call the both of us crazy. Uh, this novel, uh, it, it answers absolutely none of the questions that we have about the universe, about the lore. It just answers absolutely none of them. It doesn't show us any of the characters uh, that we care about, or maybe their backstories, or their family backstories. Maybe it would have been a good standalone novel set in its own universe, but you know, I don't see why it would be set in this one. In a real, living, breathing world, there is more than one story happening that is interesting. There is just a whole bunch of them. They are happening all of the time and they have nothing to do with each other. And not every reference to things that exist in that world are Easter eggs to each other. Imagine someone on Reddit trying to prove that uh, Crooks from Of Mice and Men is related to Tom Robinson from To Kill a Mockingbird because they're the same race and are in adjacent time periods. That is either someone who's trying to just have fun with a stupid mental exercise, or someone who is legitimately insane. Why do we accept these things in fictitious versions of our world, but reject them with such vehemence when it comes to genre fiction? Why isn't genre fiction allowed to have the same level of complex world building that the real world does? Why are these two things held to such different standards? There there are expanded universes of things, and a lot of people are very opposed to that. They think that they should just stick to the main events of that universe, while failing to be able to describe the main events of their universe. It's like sometimes when we enter the world of genre fiction, we seem to forget that the best stories are sometimes not galaxy-spanning epics that touch the lives of every single living creature that has ever existed, but just a guy driving another guy across the country on a concert tour. There's so many authors of genre fiction, especially Brandon Sanderson who said, oh, you can, you can have all of the things that you can have in like proper traditional fiction, but you can also have plasma guns. And plasma guns are cool. And this is true in theory, but try actually pitching the aforementioned story about the prince with PTSD to someone who actually works in this industry and have them not go, well, how about we take that character and those characters and we set that story when on the quest where the prince is trying to kill the dragon and save the princess. And if you want to talk about PTSD, maybe have a side character who has it. And that would be much more epic. It's a much more interesting period of time in the character's life, wouldn't you think? There's a lot of people who tell me that Lord of the Rings, even though it was a good book for its time, the writing sucks by today's standards. And that's bullshit. Just plain old bullshit. Long descriptive passages and tangents with John Bombadil. They're not bad storytelling or writing, they're just things that don't sell well in the current market. And I think we should maybe remember that the quality of writing isn't necessarily affected by how well it sells. Meanwhile, Ulysses, praised by many as the best book of all time, 
is a meandering piece of shit that just is about a guy going through Dublin on appointments. That's what the book, that's all it is. Just, and because it was new and interesting at the time, it is now the best book ever. Even in today's increasingly liberal genre market, you could not get away with writing sci-fi or fantasy or steampunk Ulysses. I'm sorry, why would you uh, tell us that Kraken ghosts exist and they never show us any of them? How about why would you establish that there's an ancient culture of people who built amazing statues of gods and you ha ask the question whether or not they have fucking anuses and then you never show them to us? How about that fucking question, eh? So one of two things is true, right? Either genre fiction authors just aren't allowed to do, like, interesting personal or experimental stories. Or, this is the alternative, authors of traditional fiction are just inferior to authors of genre fiction in every conceivable way. They're not as good writers, they're not as good storytellers, they are just very bad when compared to the incredible skills that genre fiction has. And the only reason people like fiction over genre fiction is because they hate dragons. And I, I do believe that if you unpack those and clean them of hyperbole, you can make solid points that are unironic in favor of both of them. But I will leave that to you. Thank you very much for watching. My fucking voice is still dead. I have not been sick for this long in very long, like 10 years probably. Like, comment, subscribe, do all the things, share this to your relevant communities, but do not spam them, because it is supporting me on Patreon or Subscribestar, maybe buying some of the merchandise that I have on offer. And in that spirit, write some genre fiction that isn't saving the fucking universe. Write Green Book, but it's, it's aliens. D do it. Just fucking do it. Because we're not allowed to. That's why you should do it. And see you around, cunts.